guts, human health, soil, we're at it again. I'm gonna talk about some recent research which focuses on the human microbiome and specifically the guts and how this has impacted our understanding of multiple sclerosis. Now I've talked about human health and the link to soil before, but maybe a little less specifically about particular diseases. So why is this research important to you if you're growing your own food? Well, stay tuned, I will tell you why. So this research was published at the end of January 2022 on the eBiomedicine website. And this work highlighted that multiple sclerosis, MS, has a complex immune and metabolic pathophysiology. Recent studies implicate that the gut microbiome has relevance in MS pathogenesis. So it's relevant, it is an influencing factor in whether people do or do not end up suffering with MS. However, and this is where it is unique, interactions between the microbiome and the host immune system which is really the starting point for whether people do or do not develop MS haven't been studied nor has the metabolism and the diets that they the people who end up suffering with MS actually consume and how that can affect the disorder so this particular study uh, set up around 49 people evenly balanced so that the age, sex, the ethnicity or cultural backgrounds was closely the same as possible for a load of control people and a load of people recently diagnosed with MS. Now in this other article written by a chap called Nick Kepler on inverse.com which actually referenced this study, it's mentioned about the breadth of knowledge gap that we have about multiple sclerosis. In fact, researchers do not know why people develop the condition have been left with a baffling list of risk factors, including the fact that Caucasians are more likely to develop MS and women are also more likely to develop one type compared to others. MS is also more prevalent in colder climates. Maybe this relates to the types of foods that are being eaten, but we'll come to that in a bit. Also, a history of other infections may play a role in triggering the condition. So we have a couple of things going on here. Climate being a factor possibly, uh, that obviously dictates the types of food that are grown, that we eat, as it does in terms of the uh, quality of the natural defenses, how robust the immune system is. And obviously if we have a failing in our immune system and end up getting certain diseases, developing certain problems, quite often antibiotics are prescribed. And what do antibiotics do? They knock out our natural microbiology, including that in our guts. And so the microbiome has to start again and that diversity is lost and all of a sudden we become at risk of conditions later on in life, what it's mentioning here, potentially MS being one of those. Now, we already know that the gut microbiome helps train and develop the immune system. Researchers know that diet plays a crucial role in shaping what species reside in our gut and what amounts so perhaps there are insights to be taken from looking at the digestive and metabolic health of people with MS. And this is the purpose of this research. This is where the revelation really comes to light. Now, one of the authors of this piece of work told the author of the article I've just referenced at Inverse magazine that the small study was the first attempt at examining MS from a new perspective. And this was because there's technology available that allows scientists to sequence gut bacteria from a stool sample and identify the telling after effects of metabolism as seen in the bloodstream, plus the knowledge that all of these facets are connected. So taking into account all of these things, this research got a group of people together that were all as similar as possible, split them in two. Half of those people were healthy or non 
MS suffering patients. The other half were recently diagnosed. They looked at the gut microbiome through sequencing measures and what they found was that one of the gut bacteria missing in people with MS was in fact an anti-inflammatory type of bacteria. Now over two million people worldwide suffer from MS. So this is really quite important stuff because it drives down onto the relevance, the significance of you are what you eat. The food that these people have been eating has been conditioning their gut microbiome over time. And in fact, they found that there was a difference in terms of what these people were eating. What they found was that the most significant dietary difference between the 24 MS patients and the 25 healthy people recruited as a control group was meat consumption. The MS patients ate on average 2.7 servings of meat for every serving eaten by the control group. Now you might be ready to jump the gun, jump onto the bandwagon that is anti-meat and going completely plant-based, but hold your horses just for the moment because this article goes on to cite that other studies have actually showed a higher prevalence of MS among people with high animal fat intake and lower prevalence in vegetarians, whereas other studies have actually found that people with increased consumption of non-processed red meat have actually had a reduced risk of neurological activity associated with MS. The authors also noted that red meat is high in vitamin D and other components that have a neuroprotective effect. So we can't really say ban all meat in order to protect ourselves from ever developing MS. It's not quite as simple as that. However, investigating this further, the researchers behind the new paper used the microbiome data to determine that in their pool of participants, high meat consumption was correlated with a lack of a particular gut bacteria that helps the stomach digest carbohydrate. And also that the presence of that same bacteria was strongly negatively correlated with the high circulation of an immune system component called T helper 17 cells. And scientists have thought that T helper cells play a role in the immune system haywire behavior in the case of MS. So this is a really important piece of work because it looks at a disease in a completely new light, looking at the role that the gut microbiome has on human health. But why is this important if you are growing your own food? Well, if you haven't checked out my other videos, I do suggest you go back to one of the very first ones I made called the Human and Soil Health connection because this really does highlight the importance of that link between soil health and human health. We are what we eat. If you are growing your own food in the most natural way that you can, you are conditioning your guts with those same organisms that are in the soil in and around your plant roots. So it really is crucial to take the time, energy and care to think about, to plan and to culture and develop these organisms so that you have the very best biodiverse array of bacteria and fungi on your food because at the end of the day, all of those are gonna end up in your body. I am definitely not anti-meat, but I do believe that health comes from a balanced intake of food. Now, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not qualified to tell you this, but it makes perfect sense that the more different things that you consume, the more diverse, the better equipped your guts will be to build up, enhance, develop your immune system so that you can fend off all of these horrible diseases, viruses, and threats to our very health. So 
when you're growing your food, do think about the long-term effects. Use that as motivation to make improvements and invest in soil health because you are investing in your own health. Now, this was a fascinating study. I'm going to leave links to the original article and also the article in Inverse magazine as well because they're well worth a read but that's going to wrap it up for now if you enjoyed it do consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel because i'm going to put out more videos like this to uh, inspire and also to teach you things and help you improve your soil so for now though we'll leave it there and until the next video i will see you then